Integrated Fertility Symposium. My name is Lauren Brown. I'm the chair of the Integrated Fertility Symposium and clinical director of AccuBalance Wellness Center. And today I want to say thank you um, to the team at Power Medics Lasers for sponsoring this lecture. Um, I had the opportunity to sit down with Anne-Marie Jensen and talk about what she's doing in Copenhagen using laser and body work um, to optimize people trying to conceive, whether it's naturally or through ART, like using IUIs and IVF. Before um, um, we get into the lecture and the Q&A, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping um, to let you know again that this lecture is sponsored by Paramedic Laser. So thank you very much um, to the Paramedics group. And on their website or on the sponsor page, there's lots of information here, um, which I'll talk about. The recording will be up there from the laser talk. Um, and there's some handouts available to you as well that I'm going to share uh, momentarily. First, just to remind you, this is also a Healthy Seminars event, so we made this available to everybody, not just part of the Integrated Fertility Symposium, um, but we made it available to all of our friends. And so it's one of our community unity lectures as well. And so if you go to healthyseminars.com, you go to resources, this is where you can find um, what's happening in the Healthy Seminars uh, world. Um, as you can see, the Laser for Fertility talk, this is where um, we listed this talk. Um, if you're watching this um, on, on social media and it's past the live stream date, you can come to the resource page and this link will take you to where you can watch the recording. Um, for those that are part of the IFS, um, I do want to remind you um, that we have two more pop-up lectures for the month of June. Um, we have one on how to help patients understand and prepare for the COVID vaccine from an Eastern and Western perspective um, and how to answer questions, whether they're trying to conceive, whether they're already pregnant or breastfeeding. So this is gonna be an informative lecture available to those that are part of the Integrated Fertility Symposium. If you're not part of the IFS, um, you can still register until July 4th, 2021. Um, and you have access to the IFS until August 31st, 2021. Um, and also, we just added this um, lecture for June 30th, Success Inside the Integrative IVF Clinic, 10 years later. This is a really special lecture. Um, Dr. Tracy Malone is a naturopathic physician, and her team is actually inside an IVF clinic. So they are part of the IVF clinic. And they have been looking at their data. And this we're getting a sneak peek at their data. So it's not published yet, but they're allowed to share this part of the data, of their research, um, and in a nutshell, she's showing how preconception care, diet, lifestyle, acupuncture supplements, the things that they do, um, they showed an increase in women going through IUI and through IVF. And so this is one of the first studies where they're looking at people that do the preconception. All the research is always on transfer day acupuncture, for example, right? What's happening on transfer day. Um, and this is about how can we improve egg and sperm quality before that transfer day, whether they're trying to conceive with IUI or through an IVF setting. And so this is not to be missed. Again, this is also exclusive um, to the IFS group. And so if you go to the Healthy Seminars and you click on resources, you can see what's coming up. We'll have more in July and August because the IFS is going to August. If you scroll down below, there's a little bit more on each of these lectures that I just briefly mentioned, okay? So I wanna let you know that that's available to you. Now, if you wanna come back and watch this lecture again, um, you wanna know more, more about Pyramedics lasers, there's a couple ways to do this. From the healthyseminars.com website, if you click on the link IFS 2021, um, it will take you to the, um, where is this page here? On my, here it is, okay, it'll take you to the IFS website. And then just click on sponsors. And when you click on sponsors, you'll see an intro um, from Maya from the Power Laser, Power Medics Laser Team, um, and some information about the lasers. And then here's something that's really special. Um, the the below this lecture, you can download um, some of the research that they have um, or literature that they have published around laser for fertility. You can also go right to their website. So if you go to the Power Medics website, you can see they have. Um, information here, using it as a laser acupuncture um, and other areas of professions. They have a whole section on laser fertility. This part's important. This is how I'm going to get us into our lecture today. Um, this is how I learned about the paramedics laser group. Um, I saw this paper um, that they shared where they basically talked to clinicians using their laser system. 
and they had eight clinics report their success rates. And you can see some pretty impressive success rates for using the laser for fertility. Now, when something's under 10, that to me is a low powered number here for clinical observation. But when you start to look at some of these larger numbers and look at clinic eight, at that time, 171 um, women were treated in their success rate. And that, um, Clinician is Amory Jensen. And so I got introduced to Amory through Maya at the Power Medics Laser Group. We got to geek out and we've done many times over email for a couple of years about the laser for fertility. Um, her background is a physical therapist and laser therapist. She's also trained in other forms of body work here. Some of them I can't even pronounce here. Um, so uh, Mojazova method, Aviva method, the Mercier therapy, scar tissue um, treatment, psoas release courses. She's the master of using ab abdominal work to free up structures, move lymph, increase blood flow, and she's always combined it with her laser therapy group. So we had many time, many opportunities to talk, and she wrote a book. And back in the day, it was not in English, but she translated it into English called Fertility and Physical Therapy, A Guide to Therapy and Self-Treatment. And this book is an excellent book. Um, I had the privilege and the honor to write the pre preface to this book as well. And this gives an incredible explanation of using laser for fertility. And so, um, and then she shares all the stretches and a lot of body work that you can do to help with fertility. So an excellent book. And I'll let you know that this is also available through Anne-Marie Jensen's website, as well as through the Power Medics Laser website. Now, I mentioned that you can go to the Paramedics Laser and read this paper. And then they published a paper on this as well in more detail. And this is all available through Paramedics. So if you're interested in this literature, because patients really like to hear about how this can help, then do contact Paramedics Lasers, because this is something that you want to blog about or share with your patients. I think it will be very beneficial. Now, I want to remind you for this lecture that it is still educational. It's for educational purposes only. This is not um, intended to be medical advice, so therefore it should not be perceived as medical advice. If you have a health condition, please seek out a, health, a qualified healthcare provider, because again, this is for educational purposes only. I just want to go back to, again, you can check out more about Power Medics Laser at powermedicslaser.com. Amory Jensen's book is available there, and those that article and the paper they publish is also available through powermedicslaser.com, as well as information on their lasers. And then remind you that if you go to the IFS website under sponsors, you can see the literature here that we've shared. They have a special going on until we've just updated this. Let me see. If, um, I have to update my browser. We literally just updated this because we extended the IFS. And so their special, there you go, goes to August 31st, 2021. Um, so I want to let you know about that. And the Q&A will be placed on this page as well once we're through the Q&A. And then I'm already um, talking to the group at Paramedics Laser of another Laser for Fertility talk for you guys that we're going to do in August. So stay tuned for that as well. But again, that's on the IFS website. Go to sponsors and you can learn more about um, the lectures that they have available. And registration is still available um, if you haven't, if you're not part of the IFS, you can still join and um, um, we're going to close registration now July 4th and you have access until August 31st to complete up to 36 hours of CEUs and we have many pop-up lectures. We have um, about 12 to 15 public educational videos as well that you can share with the public to educate and inspire them to seek you out for integrated fertility care. All right, let's bring up this video. Um, during the lecture, this uh, the, lect the video replay, please post your questions in the chat. Amory Jensen is live with us, so we're going to play the recording that um, um, Amory and I did a few weeks ago. And then at the end of this recording, um, Amory is going to be here to take your questions. <music> Hello, and I want to welcome you to this interview. My name is Lauren Brown. I'm the chair of the Integrated Fertility Symposium and clinical director of AccuBalance Wellness Center. And today I get to interview Anne-Marie Jensen. She's a physical therapist, 
practicing in the Denmark area, large area to yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's also the author of Fertility and Physical Therapy, A Guide to Therapy and Self-Treatment. Um, she has this book in a couple of languages. It's available in English. Um, I had the good fortune to be able to read it and write a preface a preface to the, to the English version. And this book can be um, purchased through her website, as well as if you're in Canada, the United States, you can also contact Paramedics because they also have copies of this book available. Um, Amory, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into the laser for fertility, please? Well, as you said, I'm a physiotherapist and I've been working with the laser therapy since I, since I started working as a physiotherapist. And uh, was it, I, don't, I can't remember the year, but I bought a Giga laser from um, Power Medic. And I'd only had it for a few months, I think. Uh, then this woman from Sweden contacted me. She would like uh, to give, she would like me to give her um, fertility enhancing treatments. And I had never heard of that before. So I said, uh, sorry, I'm a physiotherapist. I don't work with fertility. But she was very insisting and said, I've heard they have so good results with the Giga laser and infertility in uh, Norway. And I really, really need to try. She'd been trying for, I think, five years with absolutely no success. So uh, she persuaded me. I allowed her to come to the clinic six, for six treatments. And two weeks after, she called me and said, thank you. I'm pregnant. And then there was a little uh, problems with the, um, uh, she had a um, pregnancy in the tubes. So she had that removed and then we tried for six treatments again and she got pregnant again. That's what. Uh, that's where it started for you. That's where it started. And then I actually, there was an international um, laser discussion site at that time. I don't know if it exists anymore. So one evening I posted um, a question saying, this happened to me. This is my case. Does anybody else work with laser and fertility? And the next morning when I got up, my uh, um, I had so many uh, mails from all over the world, people saying, yeah, we did that for years. It's worked so well. And then I got more and more into this um, subject. And this is... Uh, the biggest part of my patients are, are now fertility patients. And where we got to know each other um, um, was through the paramedics paper where they published their clinic audits. And they had, I think, 10, either eight or 10 clinics where people, practitioners like yourself were self-reporting. And we got introduced because you had the most cases and really yeah. good um, success rates. So I, I kind of want to, I would like to know a few things because we'll probably have both professional and the public um, watching this and people yeah. are curious about photobiomodulation, also known as low level laser therapy for fertility. Um, what are you seeing in your clinic now? Like, are you mainly seeing women trying to conceive naturally or are you also supporting women going through in vitro fertilization with and using your laser and your approach? Well, I think actually, unfortunately, I think most of them are going through uh, in vitro fertilization, and and when they start seeing me, they have they have had a lot of uh, um, unsuccessful IVF treatments already. I would like to see them before. I think they should start coming to uh, to me, but but they in Denmark it's normal to see the the medical doctors first, and that's the path they choose first. And and after a while, they they can feel that this is this is not working for me, and they start looking for something else. So most of most of my clients have gone through quite a lot of IVF treatments before I I see them. I do have some starting treatments with me trying to become natural pregnant, but maybe it's it's less than a third. Okay. And then of the two thirds, we'll talk about that one third as well, but of the two thirds yeah. that have had unsuccessful IVF cycles and they see you, um, what are you seeing in your clinical practice and what are the IVF clinics? Are they noticing that the women you're treating 
and I know you treat men as well with laser. Are they, yeah. are you seeing they're unsuccessful, unsuccessful, and then they do some, a series of laser treatments and seeing some success? Uh, the first meeting I have with my clients, uh, we do a lot of uh, diagnostic work. I spend a lot of, of time on the first meeting uh, to see if I can figure out why they don't uh, conceive. So sometimes at the first uh, meeting, I don't, I don't give laser sometimes. Um, and then f when I have finished my diagnostic work, or at least the first part of it, uh, I try to figure out if we should go the laser way or if we should uh, start uh, specific exercise programs, if we should talk diet, um, if we should add some manual therapy, et cetera. And, um, it's, a, it's an important point, actually, because when I read your book and we've talked, you do an, a, a thorough assessment, and then a lot of your, the women you're seeing, you're doing the physical therapy, like structural, uh, structural issues around the pelvis and the uterus and the tubes. You talk yeah. about diet, you talk about supplements, you talk about stress reduction, and then yeah. you combine that with your laser therapy. So it's important yeah. that it's not, not that you haven't found the magic bullet yet either. You just found things that continually support and help. Yeah. Most of my, I, I add laser treatment to maybe 90% of my clients. If they're very young, I don't start with laser unless they have PCO, endometriosis, or um, scar tissue. So most most of my um, my clients receive laser treatments. So there was that first part of the question that I want to go to why if the women are really young, reproductive, really young, you don't do laser and why you're doing it for PCOS, endometriosis or advanced maternal age or scar tissue. So in the IVF setting, um, you're putting the women through a series of of laser treatments. And from what I remember in the paper from paramedics, um, how they use the Giga laser and your book, usually it's it, ideal situation was six treatments in the first two weeks of um, the cycle, oh, the so cycle. Often ovulation. Um, yeah. So usually it's three treatments a week for two weeks. Um, are you getting different outcomes in the IVF clinic? And then we'll go to that question about um, what the mechanism of the laser is and why you're using it for older women or endometriosis and PCOS? Well, a lot of my clients, especially if they have age-related infertility, uh, uh, two weeks of laser treatment is not enough. So sometimes it takes quite a while when you work with physiotherapy. I need to work with the clients for maybe three months or six months to get the results we're hoping. So it's not that I just add laser for a couple of weeks and then you see this miracle happen and the fertility doctors call me and say, wow, what are you doing? <laughs> it, it's not, it's. There's a process. It's three to six oh, yeah. months. In, in Vancouver, it's the same thing. You know, we're seeing them for three to six cycles. And I'll let you know, I don't know if you wear this. I interviewed a group out of Japan um, where they're using laser therapy as well with yeah. acupuncture in an IVF setting. And they showed that um, the data they've collected over 10 years that they were doubling the blastocyst rate. So women who did IVF and then they did a series of laser after unsuccessful IVFs and a series of laser, they were doubling how many day five blastocyst embryos they got. Yeah. And when I asked them, they said on average, it's three to six months. Um, yeah. If we haven't helped them after six months, they find that they still may, but the chance are it's so much complicated and there's something else going on that after six yeah. months of that regular laser treatment, if it hasn't done it by then, it may yeah. not do it. But yeah. three months on average, but it realistically expect three to six months. Yeah. Is that your I, experience? I actually, I saw that interview okay. uh, and I enjoyed it very much. And this is very much uh, the same um pattern I see with my clients. In, in Denmark, the, the fertility doctors work a lot with low stimulation at the moment. So we don't always see that the amount of egg they are retrieving is, is getting higher because the, uh, the medical treatment is, is changing and they are aiming for less egg retrieval right. to get better quality. 
And that's what they're saying. I think even in Japan, although we're saying they double the blastus rates, it yeah. wasn't. It's not how many eggs they got, but how many go to day five, and that's a sign yeah. of quality that they're getting more to go to day five. Exactly, more to go to day five, more to to put in the freezer because the quality is better. And then, what yeah. is the mechanism then um, from the laser therapy? What is the mechanism that is improving the quality? Um, what do you think is the mechanism that's helping women with polycystic ovarian syndrome or endometriosis and, and the qual egg quality? Well, to start with the uh, PCO patients, there is some really, there is a new study. I don't know if I, I can't remember if I sent it to you about the folliculogenesis, the uh, um, trial with rats. Uh, you can, you know, the problem with PC. OS patients is that the the eggs uh, don't mature well. They um, ovulate a little too early. The eggs they ovulate are not mature enough. Uh, so it seems that laser helps the egg to mature properly. So this is one of the reasons why we see better quality of egg when we um, stimulate with the laser therapy. Yeah, I think in one of those PCOS papers, because there's a few out there, one yeah. of the mechanisms was the laser's ability to regulate inflammation. And with PCOS, yeah. with the androgens and the insulin uh, sensitivity resistance, yeah. they're seeing more inflammation. And so the blood flow mechanism and the mechanism to regulate inflammation, they think may be one of the reasons it, it helps in that rat model. Yeah. And you see the, the mitochondria working better, produce more ATP. Right. which is uh, probably the main reason why the, the age-related fertility patient, uh, um, the, the, the laser treatment is working very well on the age-related women, age-related infertility women, uh, because the, the mitochondria and the egg cells are more active and produce more ATP. Uh, when it comes to uh, our endometriosis patients, they often have quite good eggs. They, they often don't have a big problem with the egg quality and the amount of egg, uh, but they have this constant or regular inflammation um, in the reproductive uh, organs. So what I think we can, we can do with the endometriosis patient is, is decrease the, inf uh, the inflammation maybe uh, in the uterus to get a better implantation. Do you, I, you know, it makes me think I, I had a, a, an opportunity to have many discussions with Roberta Chow. She's well known for publishing in the Lancet about using laser therapy for neck pain, but she yeah. also uses it in her practice and sees women with endometriosis and told me many of her anecdotal stories where help, women um, reduce their pain and had infertility and gone on to have children naturally. Yeah. In her practice, what she shared with me was not only doing it into the pelvic bowl, so over the abdomen, which we like to use with the Giga laser, right? In your practice over, over yep. the abdomen. But she also says it's really important to get do it over the sacrum and, and get it into oh, yeah. that area. So yeah. I was wondering in the paper, that paramedics um, um, published. And I'll let people know that you can get that paper from paramedics. It's on their website. It's on the Integrated Fertility Symposium website as well. Really cool paper to see the, the protocol and what they do. Um, they, You guys were just doing over the abdomen. I think it's program six, which is about a 23 minute treatment where the laser sits over the abdomen. It's important also, it doesn't go on the skin. It's just a little bit above. For those that are acupuncturists, this is what's really attractive by that giga laser is you can still put needles if you do acupuncture yes. on the abdomen and the laser sits above it. Are exactly. you using it just over the abdomen or do you also do it over the lower back and the sacrum area in your practice? So I was just curious how, how you're using the giga laser for fertility and endometriosis and PCOS. For these women, they mostly use it on the front to treat themselves uh, on the front. But when I work, I work a lot with the, with the back, with the SI joint, with the uh, lower back muscles, if they have tension, if they have inflammation, uh, or even in the neck, you, as, as you probably uh, read the articles from Dr. Oshiro, he did yeah, a lot of- 
Yeah, the karate. And the yeah. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. You know, um, Maya um, from Paramedics once asked me to look at the Giga Laser because, like you, I have a focus in Vancouver with our fertility practice. And that she said, how would you use the Giga Laser from what I know? And this is from interviewing the group from Japan, talking to Roberta Chow, talking to you, um, talking to Fred Kahn in Toronto, all these and, and more laser experts. And I sat with it and obviously I, I would do what you guys are already doing because you've shown anecdotally, clinically, some good results with program six for 23 minutes over the abdomen. And I like the idea of, so 23 minutes on the abdomen, program six, and then 10 minutes over the sacrum program four, just to get the blood flow to the uterus, so that uterine receptivity, and to help relieve any inflammation um, yes. in the lower abdomen and just that whole area. And again, because so many of the people I've spoken to that do clinical work with endometriosis or fertility, they seem to like to do both sides, the abdomen and the sacrum area. So um, what, cause you're really intimate with the giga laser. What, how does that sound? Program six, 23 minutes, abdomen program four, 10 minutes, um, sacrum area. Is that, does that sound reasonable based on your experience? Cause you've been using that laser since like 2012 or something, I think. That's very, uh, how very close to how we work here. Uh, if I see my clients here, uh, in the clinic, I always work on the back never just on the front. Sometimes I work with the, with the power laser, the smaller laser right. uh, to and point it. Is that the 500? Cause that's another, is that the 500 to 1500 from power medics? I work with 500. Okay. Um, because then I can point exactly on the SI joints or exactly on the testicles, or I can even try to point exactly on the ovaries. So, or exactly on certain uh, neck joints. I know. I like I like their probe. Again, looking at the paramedics equipment, the Holo Shiro technique, right? It's not like ganglia yeah. and the Shiro. Yeah. I like their Pro 500 or Pro 1500 for the neck stuff. And yeah. then I like the Giga for the abdomen and the, and the sacrum. Now, you yeah. said testicles. And so... Um, let's talk about the men. So yeah. what are you, cause in your book, you talk about it. So where are you now? What are you doing for men for male fertility? What are you doing to support them using the laser therapy? Um, again, with men, we had the first session we have is a diagnostic session. We try to figure out if he should quit smoking <laughs> or if he should start exercising a little bit more, change his diet. Um, and then I give them some exercises, whatever. And then if they have back pain, lower back pain, I uh, offer giga laser treatment. And if they don't uh, have any pain issues, uh, we only work with the, with the small power laser when we treat men. Uh, so what we do is, is um, 20 seconds on each testicle, no direct contact, keep the laser moving. And then we, uh, we uh, point at the prost prostate for mm -hmm. four times 10 seconds. We move the laser a little bit, but, and here we use direct contact with so a little pressure. So if I'm doing the joules in my head, if you're using the Pro 500, that yeah. would be 10 joules per testicle if you're doing it 20 seconds. And then when you place it on the skin um, to direct it at the prostate, you're doing it for 20 joules. Yeah. Okay. And then we do the testicles again. Oh, so the testicles get two doses Twice. of 10 joules. Yeah. So 20 joules per treatment. Yeah. So they get the 20 joules, have a little break when when we treat the prostate and then the 20 joules on the testicles again. I like that. It, that's an interesting a way that, that you're doing it. And so I'm assuming because you have the probe, they're draped and you just give them the probe and they go under the sheet and they're lasering themselves or you're in Europe, you guys just go for it. Cause in Canada, we probably give them the probe and let them do it under the sheet. You're, you're European. So I have to ask, how do you guys do it in Europe? <laughs> 
we we also uh, show them exactly how to do and then they take the power laser and lock themselves up in the bathroom in the <laughs> toilet and, and do it themselves yeah right. All right. and that we do it um at least three times usually three times they get three treatments over what period of time ideally within a week before they have to deliver Okay, so before they have to give their sample or try yeah. to conceive, you give it at least three times within that week. And yeah. so at this stage, you're, it's you know trying to improve that um, the mitochondrial function. So this is a motility, kind of like for the motility idea, I imagine. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Okay. There's, and, a, there's one study uh, saying that it might even uh, improve the, you call it the DNA, DNA fragmentation. Um, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. There, I seen that paper where they're showing um, one of the things they were looking at is to make, cause they're thinking laser, but these are non ionizing lasers, right? Non heating lasers. They, yeah. I think they wanted to make sure they would, the, the laser wasn't damaging the exactly. sperm, the DNA. So yeah. take it out of, cause I'm, that'd be an easy, easy treatment for the guys as well. So back to some of the other gynecological issues, which impact fertility, so you're using it for just general fertility, that advanced maternal age. What I understand is for improving the energy on the on the egg on the egg level, yeah. the mitochondria. So that helps with um, um, uh, fertilization and embryo development and implantation. Uh, I use that kind of therapy to decrease stress levels in the body. Um, but what I think is, I don't know how much time we have left, but I think it's very important that we have time to talk about uh, scar tissue. Let's go right to scar tissue then. Yeah. Tell me what you're because, doing for scar tissue with your manual work and your laser therapy, because that yeah, is very important when it comes to fertility. That is, uh, I have so many scar tissue treat, uh, so many scar tissue patients, and the combination of manual therapy and the Giga laser is fantastic because you can. You can put your fingers under the giga laser and you can work manual with the patient at the same time as you add the laser therapy. And and that works so well. And I think we really have to to spread the information that if you have scar tissue in uh, your um, around your reproductive organs in your abdominal area and your pelvic area, do get the scar tissue treated before you spend a lot of years and money doing IVF because often you can have you can have good eggs, but the problem is the implantation. And if you combine a manual therapy, I'm very inspired by the the American Wern, um, the Clear Passage, the Mr. And Mrs. Wern's the work that they did. Combine manual therapy, release the scar tissue, and then add the laser. Uh, because when you work with scar tissue, you have to do what we call traumatic treatment. You have to destroy the scar tissue. And then you have to make sure that the new um, healing process is optimal. And that's where you need the laser. And, and I have such good results working with scar tissue patients. I'm glad you shared that because it's something that it's common in many women um, from exactly. maybe history of chlamydia, um, surgeries for whatever reasons. Um, and then um, I don't know if, if you've been doing this, but I often encourage the women I see that have had C-sections as soon as they're able to come in, to come in early stage. So some of the patients we see, you know, we know they've had a C-section. As soon as we can get them in, we start to do the giga. I like that giga laser idea, right? Putting the laser over the abdomen. To me, that makes a lot of sense to yeah. reduce the scar tissue from forming. And then if they've had C-sections, another idea to get in there and um, help soften that scar tissue, which laser therapy has been shown to do in general to soften scar tissue and adhesions. There is a study showing that the, the scar tissue gets uh, less thick, less wide, if you if you add the the laser and then in a perfect world where time and money is not an issue yeah. for scar tissue what would you what would be the expectation how many treatments in a week what stage of the cycle would you like to see them and for how many weeks or months would you like to see them to know that you've given the um, you've allowed opportunity to soften or break up that scar tissue 
Um, well, the first time I see my patient, I always try to figure out, could there be some scar tissue here? So you have to not only look, but ask to the history, as you said, chlamydia, uh, but any kind of infection could cause scar tissue. So you, and, and, and often they have had, uh, do you say keyhole operations? Uh, your, your laparoscopic operations, yeah. which are the keyhole operations. Okay. Uh, that leaves very little visual um, scar tissue, but they can have a lot of scar tissue inside. So you have to ask through their history. Uh, and then the scar tissue is very different. You don't have two uh, patients with the same scar tissue. You, you, you sometimes you see patient with a total frozen pelvic. The scar tissue had spread, everything is frozen and stiff. And sometimes you see um, a woman with just a little tiny uh, C-section scar and, and you can hardly feel it if you close your eyes. So it's very different how I treat these women, but I always start by teaching them how to work with their scar tissue themselves. That means that they don't have, as, as soon as they, uh, they can do that themselves, they don't have to see me that often. You know, I told you that they can uh, use the laser while I'm, while I'm not here, so they can treat themselves, manual therapy, and then add the laser. And if I think it's optimal if they do it two, three times a week. Uh, when we get close to ovulation or close to egg, uh, what do you call it, retrieval? Egg retrieval in an IVF, retrieval. yes. They have to take a break because when you work with the manual therapy, uh, you actually might cause an inflammation. So don't do that right before egg retrieval or ovulation. Take a break. You can still add the laser, but be soft when you get close to ovulation. So, and then, you know, sometimes you can see a patient with a, a scar tissue that is 20 years old, but you can still have a, a magnificent effect. You can still treat them. And, and sometimes you have a very new um, C-section scar tissue, as you just mentioned before. Uh, and if it's very new, you have to be very soft and gentle and they don't have to do the treatment three times a week. It can be less. And that makes sense because it's fresh, new, so it, it hasn't solidified into that old scar tissue, right? It still yeah. has a chance, responds mm -hmm. easier, responds quicker. I think so, yeah. So in general for the fertility, I just kind of want to hear again from you kind of the the process of how you're treating, like how often, for how many months, um, and I, I do want to remind people that are part of the 2021 Integrated Fertility Symposium, do check out the Paramedic sponsor page. They have put out a special deal offering. Actually, anybody can go to that page um, while the IFS is happening, or you can mm -hmm. just contact Paramedics directly. They have a special offer for you guys. And the paper that I kind of referenced at the beginning, that there's, um, I think, at least eight clinics on there, Amory, Jensen being one of them, um, mm -hmm. that's available and they've updated it. Um, I'll remind you that Paramedics also has copies of Amory's um, um, book in English, if you're interested in that. Yeah. And so is it, are you still doing the same thing then what I saw in your book and in the paper? Um, ideally, if you could recommend women that they would see you basically six times from their menstrual bleed to ovulate just before ovulation. And then if they have another menstruation, meaning they're not pregnant, they would do another cycle and they could expect to do that up to about six cycles um, leading into an IVF or trying to conceive naturally. Is that kind of what you're still doing at this time? Yeah. When it comes to uh, laser treatment, I didn't change much since I wrote this uh, English book. So this is basically what we do. Okay. So if it works, keep doing it. And yeah. then what, what I heard today is in your practice, you do treat both front and back with women. If they have endometriosis or if they have pain in the back, 
they do that. And in our practice in Vancouver, um, we also like this idea of kind of like in the Japan interview, and it sounds like you're doing the same. I like yeah. the Oshiro idea. That's yes. the um, Dr. Oshiro from Japan that kind of really got this fertility laser movement happening in the 90s, where he did laser around the crotch and the stalate ganglia. Um, and, um, and then um, I love this idea of the giga because it's such a large area, about 500 centimeters squared. You really cover the abdomen, the t- uh, the yeah. ovaries, even the I re- re- reading about the intestines, you know, the microbiome that they they benefit from the laser. So when you use the gig over the abdomen, um, then that should be benefiting the gut health, that microbiome. And I like the idea of the sacrum just because it seems like so many um, people that I've like yourself that I've interviewed um, seem to think that's important for the blood flow to the uterus and still for general regulation of inflammation in the body is another key. So it sounds like that's what all the fertility experts, uh, not all, sounds like many of the fertility experts I've talked to like to do the Oshiro technique, abdomen and sacrum with their laser. One thing that really inspired me when I did the ATMAT, the Maya abdominal uh, courses is that uh they work a lot with the position of the uterus and especially for the women with the retroflex uterus you right, have to work with the back right yeah. you know we have a maya abdominal massage um, therapist she's a nurse and um yeah. you, you, you when you told me about breaking up scar tissue just one of your treatments with the laser there I was like, yeah. huh that may be because we have her do it separately she just does the maya massage in the clinic but I was like huh with the it, if you have like that giga laser, yeah. that would be really great for her to kind of be working on the abdomen, the lasers above the belly. That's, that's quite the treatment, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you should do that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very gentle massage. It's very, uh, I like it a lot. Uh, Understood. In, in the combination of that kind of massage or the, the German Fruchtbarkeits massage, these types of very uh, stress decreasing masha, massage therapies, they're very good for the fertility patients. And if you add the laser, you, you're going to do a great work. <clears throat> um, I want to thank the group at Paramedics for introducing me to Anne-Marie Jensen, because because of that, we've got to geek out over email the last couple of years. And mm-hmm. I got to read her book when it first came out in English, as I said, and mentioned write, write her preface. And now I get more opportunity to talk to you and see what you're doing with laser. So it's been a great um, opportunity for me to connect with you, um, Amory. And uh, I look forward to future conversations and collaborations yeah. with you as well. Take great care. You too. Thank you. And again, I want to thank um, Paramedics Lasers for um, sponsoring this lecture and for Anne-Marie to um, take the time for us to have this interview. And now we're going to, I'm going to join Anne-Marie in the Q&A because if there's some acupuncture, laser acupuncture related questions, um, I'll help to answer those. Um, so let me just pull up some of our um, questions that we have. Um, there are a few questions about, um, I have this product, what do you think of that product? Um, I'll share with you in, in my practice, as best of my ability, when somebody's doing something and you want to replicate it, um, um, use their product. <laughs> That's to me, the, it's just a simple answer. We can think. So when somebody asks me these questions, we can speculate, we can think, meaning based on what we know, based on other research and theories, we can think what would happen. But that doesn't mean we know. So to know whether this is as good as that, somebody would have to actually do a study with three arms, control giga laser and another product and then we would know until then we can only think and we can get pretty good with our thinking i will share that most of the laser systems not most so many of the laser systems on the market that are really affordable are toys as in i don't think you're going to get a therapeutic dose um, to make a big difference Um, somebody was asking in the chat i have a laser and it's 12 milliwatts So they want to use it for laser acupuncture. Well, on average, you want to do four to eight joules on an acupuncture point. And regardless of the strength of the laser, you want about 20 seconds minimum to have that effect. And there is research, by the way, where they're looking at the brain, they're looking at fMRIs with a needle versus a laser, seeing 
activation, things are happening. So they're seeing things happening. There are research with laser acupuncture, seeing outcomes, sometimes head to head with needle acupuncture and the laser acupuncture has outperformed the needle acupuncture. So this isn't just a thought, there is research on that. Going back to the laser acupuncture part, because there's a lot of acupuncturists here, that laser, for example, that was shared in the chat, um, that was 12 milliwatts, to get four joules of energy in that point would take minimum five minutes, a little over five and a half minutes. And to get eight joules, say it's a deeper point in the body, than that you're looking at over 10 minutes. So if you're going to do 10 points, that's already almost two hours of treatment. And so it's probably not realistic. Um, so as my colleagues say, what should I do with this laser pen I bought? I say, do you do presentations? Because you got a really fancy PowerPointer. <laughs> That's what you bought for $500. So Amory Jensen is not an acupuncturist. So she's using laser therapy. And there is laser therapy. And then there's laser acupuncture. What's the difference? Laser acupuncture is using um, photons to stimulate an acupuncture point. And laser therapy is using the mechanism of laser to treat tissue. And sometimes they're the same, right? The tissue and the acupuncture point. So what she's doing is laser therapy to increase blood flow to the ovaries, regulate inflammation, improve the mitochondria. And I don't think that's been studied in laser acupuncture where you just stimulate individual points, but it's definitely been studied in low level laser therapy known as photobiomodulation to have all these awesome mechanisms that create health in the body. And in this case, it's been used uh, research for um, endometriosis, for IVF settings, for infertility, for PCOS. There is a laser acupuncture for PCOS, by the way, study where they did acupuncture points with the laser and saw um, some good outcomes. So now let's get into Anne-Marie answering some of these specific questions. Anne-Marie, how long, by the way, thank you again for joining us from Copenhagen. Um, Amory, how long is a session with a patient, including the manual therapy and you using the Giga laser or the Pro 500 Paramedics laser? It's uh, either 45 minutes or 60 minutes. I, for the first session, I prefer a full hour. Or did you mean just the laser treatment? Well, when you're with, no, they want to know like how long your sessions that you're doing body work and yeah. laser with your patients. Yeah. One hour. Okay. It's, so, it's good. <laughs> yeah, we're the same thing. We're doing acupuncture and low-level laser therapy combined, and ours are 45 minutes to an hour. Mm. For frozen transfers, Anne-Marie Jensen, so there's no chance of pregnancy. They're preparing for a, a frozen embryo transfer. We, do you stop your laser treatment prior to the transfer, or do you go right up to frozen transfer when you're preparing somebody's for uterine receptivity with your laser and your body work? Well, we work until implantation. We work, uh, intensify our work up to uh, retrieval. And then if they have, uh, sometimes they have to wait a month or two to get the frozen embryo transfer then we don't do much then we just just before the the egg will be implanted we we do with some work again thank you um and somebody asked how long is if it's just laser on its own without manipulation i will share that in that i'm actually going to bring it up here so let me just bring something up the program that amory was doing and um that uh, all the group in denmark were doing with the giga laser um, it's called program six and it runs for 23 minutes. So you basically, it's a large laser and I'm going to see if I can bring it up. It's really nice from the acupuncture perspective as well as a body worker, because um, you can leave the room and you can put needles in the abdomen because the laser doesn't go onto the skin. It just goes above it. So let me just see if I can bring this up. I'm just going to show you because this will tie into what she does for men. So when you look at her products, I, I, this is the Giga Laser on Pyramedics. So see how there's three um, um, panels here. And I think it's, uh, correct me, my, I think there's 36 laser diodes and 144 red LED diodes. So 500 centimeters squared. So that covers the 
the lymph nodes, the fallopian tubes, the ovaries when you do it over the abdomen. It is a massive area that you're irradiating, which is really good for the systemic effect as well. So if you're just doing what the group did, it would be 23 minutes of laser time. That's all it is. Um, and if you're doing what Amory and I were talking about, it seems like a lot of uh, clinicians are also treating the sacral area or the nerve roots coming out of T9 to T12 because they innervate the ovaries and S2 to S3 innervates the uterus. So when I reviewed their, their, their specs, um, if I was to create a program, I would like 23 minutes on the front, program six, and I would like 10 minutes on the back, program four. So you can either just do the 23-minute program or 23 plus 10 would be 33 if it's just laser. And again, you can put the needles on the body and then the laser just hovers above it. Emery, is that, do you ever do just laser treatments? I guess so, because some patients come in and just use your laser. You have it set up in that locked room where they come in and set yeah. the laser up, right? Yeah, we have a self, self-treatment self system here. They can get a code for the door and lock themselves in. So if you go to their site, if you just kind of want to know about you know, when people ask about the cost and all that stuff, that would be um, go to their site. Here's the Giga Laser. Um, this is the one where... Um, in their papers here, remember all these clinics? It's the Giga Laser. You see here it is over somebody's abdomen, right? So it's the Giga Laser. Um, that's what that's what they're using. Um, now going back here for the male stuff uh, products, um, you said you're using the Pro 500 for like acupuncture points. You see, guys, it can be used for an acupuncture point, and you're using that for also doing the carotid work, right? The Oshiro technique. Is that my understanding? Yep. And you're using this one also for the men. So she would give this to the male. He would put it under the blanket and he would laser his testes. Um, I think it was, um, you said 10 or 10 or 20 joules per, per 10 joules, right? So they would hold it for 20 seconds on each testicle, moving it around. Yep. Then you said, so we're just repeating what we had in the lecture in your interview then they did 20 joules over the prostate, so in the perineum towards the prostate. And at this laser at 500 milliwatts, just so you know, 10 joules would be 20 seconds over each testy. So there is 40 seconds. And then 20 joules in the perineum would be 40 seconds with this 500 milliwatt laser. And then you go back and you let the guy do the testes again. So they're doing yeah. 10 joules each testy, 20 joules perineum over the prostate, and then they do 10 joules again over the testy. I said when I looked at this that if I were to do it, I like the Pro Laser 1500, which is very similar to the 500, except it has three diodes versus one. So now you get to cover a larger area. Doing acupuncture points, well, now it's not as specific. You're covering a larger area, but you still get the point. But if you're wanting to do lymph area or the testes and the carotid and around the ovaries, I like this one because you got larger surface area, which I think when it comes to fertility, um, surface area is important for that systemic effect. So I just wanted to share that part there for you guys. So Giga Laser and the Pro 500 is what Amory is using um did i am i correct in that emory yeah okay. i i do sometimes uh also use it for acupuncture points uh, that's why i like the pro 500 because you can be very specific Perfect. but you could but as you said you could also use the the 1500 yeah thank you <laughs> um I'm going to answer this one about, can you recommend any particular brand or model of safety goggles for patients to wear during treatments that are on or near their face? Um, from what I know, um, the goggles need to be based on the wavelength of the laser. So don't just buy, there is not one goggles works for all lasers. So um, most laser systems come with goggles and it should match their wavelength so if you have multiple lasers or you find a pair of goggles um, and it doesn't match the wavelength for the laser using you're not going to get the protection so there is no one fits all goggles that i'm aware of, of. um there's a question i'm ray i'll jump into but let's hear your thoughts 
there's a concern about, is there a concern about overheating the testicles? So, um, and maybe explain why you treat the way you do because of that concern. Yeah, this is, this is why we, we use a very low doses to be sure that we don't heat up the testicles. I know we talked about it uh, recently that you, that you like to use the Giga laser as well for the testicles? No, no, I, no don't you don't. Okay. I, I, you, I probe like you do, so I don't overheat. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah don't, don't heat the, the, overheat the testicles. So here we go back to guys, theory versus no. The reason Anne-Marie and myself were like concerned about how much laser and how close over the testes is, we know heat isn't good for the sperm. But we don't know if that much heat is going to damage the sperm, but we don't know. We'd actually have to do a study. Now, I will share that there are laser studies over the mm -hmm. testes where they check to see if it's damaging the sperm, DNA fragmentation testing, because in the Western world, uh, laser ionizing would damage the sperm. But this is non-ionizing laser, first of all, hence it's photobiomodulation, low-level laser therapy, and the research shows it does not damage the sperm. And so on a safety level, Anne-Marie shared, and I learned this from Anne-Marie's book with the using a probe for the testicles, because we were concerned about, you know, holding, having a lot of um, photons with a hot LED or a hot laser, not that it's hot, these are cold lasers. When I say hot is, the LED lights get warm, right? They, they, they can get warm, not hot burn, but they can get warm, uncomfortable, are comfortable warm. But that may, may, may not be good for testes. So what I learned from Anne-Marie in her book and our discussion is she takes the probe, gives it to the male, and has him hover just above the testes, moving it. We don't have a concern, but nobody knows. We haven't done the research, but we don't have a concern if you hold a probe and move it over the testes that you're going to overheat it. There is lots of animal studies on low-level laser therapy for the sperm. They're not damaging the sperm. If anything, they're, they show the increased motility. And so when heat impacts the sperm, low heat will either, first stage is it reduces the motility if it's a heat insult. And if it's a big heat insult, it affects the count. So if the laser was damaging the sperm, the first thing we would notice is likely the motility, even before the count. And there's numerous studies in animals and some in humans where it's not but again they're not sitting there and leaving a laser system on the one spot for a long period of time so amory does move the probe she doesn't she gives it to the guy and he moves the probe over yeah. his testes so um just wanted to share that part with you um is the have, go ahead we do have very good uh results using this small doses so so we don't see the reason to to give more laser because it it works with these low doses um so amory has clinical results where it works there's a question so theoretically or clinically could you use a giga laser for men i would think that if you hold the laser high enough and put it on like a program four you would not overheat the testes and there may be enough photon bioactivity to theoretically. Have you experimented with that at all where you just use the probes? We only use the probes, yeah. but we, we we do often add uh, the Giga laser on the, um, the back if they have lower back issues. We always offer Giga laser therapy, but not directly on the testicles. Good. And um, we got David Euler here, who's uh, uh, many of you know, he speaks on healthy seminars and he's used a uh, uh, 3000 milliwatt laser shower. So obviously that's multiple diodes on um, laser shower. So um, and and he says um, he's seen results, no side effects. So um, again, there's a follow up question about is too little is too much or too much is too little. What is it? Too little, too little, too much is too much when it comes to fo photobiomodulation is pretty evident in the literature that if you don't have enough dosage, so those little laser pens, there is no activation. Uh, even though you think you're doing something, there's not enough to activate the cells. And then they have what's called the Arndt Schultz rule where too much actually shuts it down. So you can put a little gas into the car, um, your foot on the gas pedal and it improves 
increases um, um, healing response, acceleration. But if you put too much, it slows it down. It does the opposite of what you want. So we know theoretically, yes, you can. But that, how generous is that window? Um, Emery and I have had this talk many times. When you're treating with skin and stuff, you could really easily, because it's superficial, easily overdo laser. Um, um, so you got to know what you're doing. When you're treating ovaries and stuff, it's really hard to get that much light to the ovaries. We, our concern is, can we get enough light? Because you got so much stuff in the way and tissues, it's, it's hard to get that much light to that area. So nobody at this stage is concerned about overdoing it when it comes to the uterus or the ovaries because the lights bounce all over the place and other tissue absorbs it. So we're questioning, are we getting even enough light that to that area? Um, however, there's this whole systemic effect of blood flow, regulating inflammation, um, oxidative stress reduction. Um, it's just incredible things. And as Anne Marie's talking about, that scar tissue that so many women have in the lower abdomen, the pelvic area, addressing that, there's so many things that you can do with your laser to improve the blood flow. So the follow-up question to that, Amory, is, is it in your experience that laser can make the uterine lining more receptive? Is there a possibility that too much laser could have a negative effect on that receptivity? Well, probably, but I think you will have to work with very, very high doses. I think, I don't think you should worry too much about giving uh, too much laser for women. Well, I haven't, I haven't uh, given more than the 23 minutes on the front and then 10, 15 minutes on the back. Um, I, I, I have no experience in, 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 in giving a higher doses than that, but I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If, if I have uh, some kind of pain or inflammation issues myself, um, I happily give myself um, more than one session a day. And I, I think the, the response is good. So you, you can, if you wanna add more laser, uh don't don't let them lie there for for uh, 46 minutes give them a break and then add some more later so that the 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 cells can um i i don't know the how to say that in english maybe there's a limit to how much you can increase the activity of the mitochondria so, so give the 20, 23 minutes and, and let them have a break and then add some more later. So yeah, the cells need a recovery time. It's like drinking water from a glass versus a faucet. You need to actually swallow. And so yeah. that's why the lasers will have a frequency of flashing. And so um, have, and there's a, an effect that lasts for days after the laser treatment. And so, yeah. um, so um, and this is why you want to study the laser versus just having a laser. You want to learn about laser therapy so you can use it well in your clinic. So they're pretty amazing tools. There is a question there. Let me know if you want to answer this one is if one uses the Giga laser, what does the laser light actually do? What's the mechanism of putting the light over the, into the body? Well, you want to increase the, the energy, you want to increase the level of ATP in the cells to make sure that the egg cells and the sperm cells have more energy. That makes it easier for the cells to do their job. Um, you want to decrease inflammation. I think laser is very effective when it comes to uh, decreasing inflammation. Uh, you want to increase blood flow. Um, you can use it to um, uh, break up scar tissue. It's like the cells are, are moving when you add laser. That's very good when you want to break up scar tissue. Um, there, I have a theory. I think, did we talk about the, the vitamin D receptivity? Go for it. I don't remember if we talked about it. I know we talked about it, but I don't know if we talked about it in that interview. So repeat it. It's worth it. Uh, it's, I haven't uh, found any good 
uh, studies on it, but I read something about it somewhere. I don't know. I can't remember where, but maybe what laser light does is to help the um, the body. Uh, what do you say? Reabsorb. Reabsorb. Vitamin D. Yeah, the might... absorption. Yeah. Um, there was actually a study also using it. It was looking at CoQ10 in a mouse study exactly, for, pain, yeah. for pain. And the um, the mice uh, had a higher absorption of CoQ10 if they've been lasered. So guys, think about it this way. If the laser is going to make your cells more efficient by improving the mitochondria, the batteries, the cells, the energy production. So if the cells become um, more efficient, then when you give it something like CoQ10, B vitamins or vitamin D, it's, it's better at absorbing and doing its job. Because as Anne-Marie shared, the laser has been shown to improve the battery of the cells, the mitochondrial function. It in, improves blood flow, so vas, uh, vascularization. It regulates inflammation. Um, so these are things that are really important for health in many diseases, not just with respect to fertility. With the scar tissue and the body work, the question is being asked, how do you do it with your laser treatment? Are you... Hold it, having the laser above your hand and you're working on the scar tissue simultaneously, or are you lasering and then later doing the body work before and after? Can you tell us practically how you're integrating the laser with body work on your patients? Is it simultaneous or is there laser, then body work, et cetera? It's simultaneous. When, when they have an appointment with me, we do both at the same time. Manual therapy and the laser is just hanging over my hands. Um, but I always teach them to work manually with their laser, uh, with their scar tissue themselves. And then they can come and add laser even when I'm not here. But so when, Emery has a massive lock to her laser against <laughs> in her office. So somebody can't come in, wheel it away. <laughs> so she does have it that they can come in, put on their glasses, turn the key, press button six, and put it over their abdomen. It's pretty simple to use. Um, and so Amory has set it up that they prepay their treatments and they come in and there's a room they go into, the laser's there, they close the door and they get on the table and um, and put the laser over their abdomen and hit go. And so so that is something that you can connect with Amory. If you guys have the Giga Laser yeah. and you get the Giga Laser, you can ask her more about how she does that, but that's what she's doing. And when you're working with the body work, so the laser is as high as it needs to be so your hands can get under the, the body, get on the body. Otherwise, you have it as close as you can to the body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm very happy with the, with the system we have that, that my patients can come and add more laser because at the moment, the next available appointment with me is, is end of August. So if I see a new patient, I, she can get the next appointment uh, in by if you want to see me in August, which is a problem for me now. That's that's why I I I decided to try to let them use the laser while I'm not here, and it works so well. And I think it increases the success rate. That's my feeling. I have to count later, but I think that that they have the chance to get the laser treatment more often. You have to use the laser several times a week. It's not enough to just do it once a month or once every second week. Thank you. Um, there was a question about Amory's book. Um, Paramedics offers it, and Paramedics has offices in the U.S. and in, in Europe. So if you contact, if you're in North America, Canada, the United States, and you want to order and have it shipped to you, contact um, paramedicslaser.com. The, and um, they can um, help you with that. Um, there's a question. It's also available as an ebook. Okay, it's available as an ebook as well. Yeah, on my website. On mm -hmm. Amory's website, there's an ebook version as well. Yeah. Um, is the Giga Laser transportable? I will ask, um, having played with this laser many times and seen it at our at the conferences, um, it's on wheels. It's it's not something that you would take out of your clinic but you could wheel it from room to room definitely yeah, but it's cumbersome exactly. so it's a it's a large device um but it yeah. definitely can be wheeled around in the clinic so you can move it from room to room um 
do you like the idea of the giga laser over the sacrum for the men? So over their sacrum, not over the testes. I like that idea. What do you think? Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. That's a great one. Get blood flow yeah. there. Um, the uterus question about the light, I just want to share. There was a laser study on uterine um, endometrial receptivity. It exactly. was a, It was an in, um, in vitro study, as in Petri dish. So they took uterine uh, tissue and they gave different dosages to the tissue. Now, we know in, vi in vivo, put it on the body will have a different impact than just directly on a cell in a Petri dish. But they showed based on different dosaging, there was an expression of enzymes and other chemicals um, that were beneficial for uterine receptivity. And they talked about, is it the time to start to bring in laser for endometrial receptivity? I'm not familiar with any study doing it over like leading up to the frozen embryo transfer, but I do want to let you know there is an in vitro study where they laser endometrial tissue and saw a positive response. There was mm -hmm. one study done a large study on laser acupuncture before and after embryo transfer that had a 15% increase in implantation rates. Um, so that was done. Again, that's one treatment. Can you imagine if you did a series of treatments? It'd be a neat research study, right? Um, uh, what training comes with it? Um, contact um, Maya and the group at Paramedics Laser. I will let you know two things from my my experience of looking at this laser um it actually has a manual so it says for tendonitis use this because if you buy this for fertility you can use it for knee pain back pain facial rejuvenation there's lots of things the and they have programs they have six programs on the giga but they list all these conditions and they tell you how much time how many treatments a week for how long you should expect results so there is a manual that comes with it and as I call this, I, I say this jokingly, respectfully, because um, I know in 2021, I don't know what you can say, but I'm going to say it as in it's idiot proof. I don't know if you're allowed to say that anymore. <laughs> idiot proof, As in the laser has six programs. And so that's what you get to choose. And so it's a little bit um, for the beginner and somebody who wants it simple. It's simple because you got six programs. And for the fertility it's program six over the abdomen and program four over the sacrum. Right. Um, if you're really a, a laser geek, then you may want to start to modify and play and you can't do that so much with the Giga, um, but you can do a lot with that Giga and it has an incredible surface area, which uh, um, when it comes to gynecological issues and large like lower back issues, um, having that large surface area, the systemic effect is pretty, pretty exciting. Um, so um, customer service warranty, again, contact um, the group at Paramedics. Um, I talked to Maya because in August for as part of the IFS, I'm a CPA as well as an acupuncturist and a trained laser therapist. And so um, I know these lasers, the ones that are effective, like the Giga and, and the good ones, they have a price tag and um, um, there's math behind it. I think that they, if you, if you look at the price, you'll, you'll freak out and walk away. But if you look at the math, and how this is a draw for patients and how much it will help them, it's actually not so intimidating. So Aunt Maya and I are talking about uh, me doing a lecture where I just do the math for you and show you, oh, it's not so bad. Um, there was a question about the Pro 500 on the lower GL. So this is sacrum. And, and just so you know, anatomically, it's really bladder 32 and 33 you want, S2, S3, I believe. Those are the, the ones that are going to have the reflex of response um, that will cause more blood flow um, to the reproductive system, both in men and women. And um, reading um, laser acupuncture, knowing Michael Weber, um, he likes four to eight joules, four to 10 joules per acupuncture point. I, um, as part of this, I reviewed the Giga Laser, the Pro 500, 1500, how I'd want to do it in a clinic. And if you're doing the um, Quato Jajis or these points, um, I would suggest you're kind of looking at doing close to 10 joules per point and maybe do two sweeps. So 10 joules down the back, some of the plateau jiao ji, and then do a second sweep. And I would probably, because if you're thinking from an acupuncture brain, if you're thinking the nerve roots, um, maybe not as necessary, but if you're thinking, I want to stimulate acupuncture points as well, um, 
Michael Weber, again, in his book, Laser Acupuncture, says at least 20 seconds. So you may want to take the Pro 500 because it's programmable and bring it down to 250 milliwatts from 500 milliwatts. And then you can hold it for 24 seconds to get the joules in there, like close to six joules would be the math, I think. And now you're getting enough time. The reason being is so many people like super power and try and get a lot of joules in so they save time. But it's like cooking a turkey. Um, if you cook it on real slow energy, like the person that had the uh, 12 milliwatt laser, that turkey is never going to cook if you put the turkey in the oven at low. It's just never going to cook. If you turn the oven on high and you have a lot of dosage coming in, you're going to burn the outside, but you're not going to cook the inside. So there is a, a happy medium of how much dosage with time. And so that's why I like the Paramedics Pro 500 and 1500. You can change the power. You can adjust it. Um, and same thing with the Giga. You can change the programming, how much power is coming out. And so if you're using the Pro 5 or the Pro 1500, I would probably use um, P2 program, and, and that's 250 milliwatts, and run down the spine that way. And then you're getting the dorsal roots, which will impact the blood flow to the reproductive system, the men and the women, and you're hitting the Huato Jiaji as well uh, from an acupuncture perspective. So um, that's how I would probably do those based on the research I'm familiar with at this time. Um, I'll remind you to check out the ProMedics Laser website. There is an article about laser for fertility that really kind of explains the mechanism and what the eight clinics did, including Amarine Jensen's. Then they kind of put it into, uh, they published their clinical audit on this. And um, it's not a research paper, but it is, you know, uh, good. It's, it's, it's a great starting point now because think of the dosage sheet. Here's some um, sound bites I want to, that I've taken from talking to Anne-Marie on this is um, it's not a one and done. You can't just treat somebody for one cycle and expect it's going to be miraculous. Yes, you're going to get the miraculous. It always happens. But talking to people around the world, so the Amory Jensen's, the group in, in Japan, in other parts of the Canada States, the group in um, Australia that are doing this kind of work, um, they all say realistically three to six cycles. So you're looking at three to six months. Not surprising that follicular genesis, right? Those 100 days, three to four months you want to treat. Um, and then in their, their um, um, clinical approach, the majority, they like the idea of three treatments in the follicular twice um, for two weeks. So six treatments in the follicular. So, um, and when I talk to other groups, they're also saying like three to or twice a week to do the laser. Um, that effect that I've seen in the literature for the laser to have that blood flow effect anywhere from um, three days, you know, at least three days, sometimes up to two weeks. So really, um, once a week could be beneficial, but twice a week is probably much more beneficial um, to really have that effect. And so if you're thinking of laser for fertility and you're wanting to get the right dosage, you're looking at two to three times a week. Um, the reason Amory's group did it in the follicular phase is it's contraindicated to put the laser over a growing fetus. So that's why they don't like to do it over the sacrum or over the lower abdomen. I will share talking to the experts. There is no real reason that it would be contraindicated. They just say, if something goes wrong, you're going to get sued. So don't do it. But yep. they're not concerned about the light affecting the fetus. Um, they don't even think the light will reach the fetus, <laughs> but um, there is no real concern except for legalities. Um, so that's why um, most people and research and stuff are doing it in the follicular only phase. You can laser a pregnant woman. Um, you just, again, for safety reasons and legal reasons, you just wouldn't put it over the fetus or over the sacrum um, at that time. Is that kind of still what you're thinking of. Yeah, David brought up a point. The eyes of the fetus, when that baby is developed, I'm thinking like early luteal, like before they know they're pregnant or early pregnancy. But David has a good point. In pregnant women, when the baby can see, this has gone through my mind, you definitely don't want to be lasering over the abdomen because the light travels around in that water and the baby could get damaged eyes um, if you have um, the certain beam. A lot of the beams, like the paramedic lasers, are divergent. So theirs can't really damage the eyes anyhow, even though you wear the goggles because they're divergent beams. Um, but a lot of them have the parallel beams, um, some laser systems, which can damage. And most of us don't know what kind of laser we have. So everybody wear glasses. 
um, because you don't know. Um, any other last questions? Any last points you want to share, um, Anne-Marie? Because there's a lot of people here that are really new to laser for fertility. You're doing body work and stretching and using the laser for your patients. I heard 90% of your patients are getting the laser. You're still seeing some great results in your practice. Yeah. And your passion sounds like you love doing it with the scar tissue as well. It's something that has come up. It's something that's not, um, there's not a lot of way to treat scar tissue and you're using body work and laser mm -hmm. and you're seeing um, changes in color and density of these scar tissues. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love working with scar tissue because uh, I have so much success with it. It's, it's pretty hard work. <laughs> so I try not to have too many uh, scar tissue patients in a row because it's, it's hard for, for my hands, actually. Uh, that's the other thing I love about the Giga Laser. I can have my hands treated with laser um, while I work. But the, the, the thing I love so much about scar tissue is the amount of success. And can I ask this question? I have two follow-up questions. Um, one is about um, what kind of body work you're doing, right? Um, like, so you can just list off the kind of the training that you've done and the styles that you like to use for fertility and, and scar tissue. And then how do you know you have success? When you say scar tissue, what has changed that you can see and what does the patient experience differently? I'm curious what we're seeing when we see a change in scar tissue. And are you talking about scar tissue that we can't see that's in the pelvis from endometriosis or chlamydia? Or are you talking like a C-section scar um, that somebody's now trying a second child and they have that scar in the lower abdomen? I think there was a lot of questions, but <laughs> let me start with the with the scar tissue. Um, it's important to work with all kinds of scar tissue, not only the, the scar tissue that you can see. You have to ask uh, through the history and, and think maybe this is a scar tissue patient. I, I might not be able to see any scar tissue, but they might have a history with a lot of infections. I think most women has had infections in their pelvic area. So you really have to, to ask uh, to the story of the patient. Um, they, if they have a lot of scar tissue, they, they often have either pain, uh, restricted uh, mobility, um, or dysfunction in their organs. So you have to ask about how does your bladder work? How does your um, intestines work? Do you have lower back pain? Do you have restriction in your hip mobility? And, and then we start working with the scar tissue and we keep asking or checking out if the mobility is getting better, if, if the pain decreases. And then of course, we try to, uh, to contact our patient to see if they get pregnant. That's it's getting harder for me to contact all the patients I did in, in the first years. And I could it was very clear that the, the scar tissue patient was the group of patients where I had the highest success rate. It's, it's very, it's very great for physiotherapists to work with scar tissue. And then you ask another question about the methods that I use. Yeah, uh, just the, they're asking, because we call it body work. So they're asking, yeah. what's the specific body work that you're using? If there is a name to it. Um, my favorite is the Moishishua method. It's a, a Czech method. You should look into that. It's uh, mainly exercise therapy. Moishishua, uh, she's dead now. She uh, worked in the 70s, 80s, and, and died in the 90s. She combined um, manual therapy with home exercises. They had to do, the patients had to do their exercise twice a day. And then uh, in the clinic, she always used infrared light, not laser, but another infrared machine. And that's very, very close to how I work. And you can, there is a, a homepage called Moshish method. You can read more about the, the work of Ludmila 
Moshishua. It's very interesting. It's very uh, basic uh, physical therapy. And then there is the German Fruchtbarkeitsmassage, which we talked about, very gentle massage to um, stimulate the lymph system and decrease the stress hormones. And I work with, I've been in, I'm inspired by the Avigo therapy. I don't use it uh, exactly the way I was taught, but it's like integrated in the way I work. I'm very inspired by Alice Domar. I like to do the, um, the courses where I gather these women in classes, where we do a mind body work. Um, I combine the, 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 my classes with the Mashishiwa method. We, we meet every Wednesday evening to train together and, and go through different subjects on uh, reproductive health and do some um, stress, stress reduction, kind, different kinds of stress reduction. Um, what else do I do? Uh, I, I, I've done courses in the Aviva method, which is a method from Israel. I hardly ever used that though, but it's, it's been inspiring to, to take the courses. Uh, maybe, maybe that's very, it. <laughs> a, very holistic, a very holistic approach, which I, I like about you. And, and you do a thorough investigation and then you have your treatment. And as you mentioned, laser is a big adjunct to what you do. 90% of that is your patients. Yeah. So as we wrap up, because we've, we've gone for a while, I'll just remind you guys, um, there was questions about success rates, etc. I'll remind you that if you go to the paramedics website, they list the clinical stuff. And then they have those articles um, where they talk about Ashura who in the 90s um, started by accident helping women with infertility. And the long story short, you can go read that on the paramedics website, mm -hmm. is they um, he was treating a woman for back pain, age 55 in menopause and her cycle returned. Mm -hmm. and, he th and he thought it was uh, nothing to do with him and it happened again. And then they did a study and they took the worst cases. Um, the, the translation to English was severe infertility. And they had about a 23% success pregnancy rate and about 68% live birth rate. And then they expanded the study again, still 23% success rate, 50% um, uh, live birth rate um, from a very challenging population. Average age was 39, many years of infertility, many ART procedures. So this is a beginning of introducing you to laser. Uh, again, we thank Power Medic Laser for um, introducing us to Amory Jensen and us, introducing us to the Giga Laser and the Pro 500 and 1500. You can contact Power Medics Laser to get a copy of Amory's book and to get information about lasers. Um, they got lots of educational material there, there as well as the articles on laser. And then for those that are looking for like names of this or what was that, the recording is up on their um, on the sponsor page, and we'll put the Q and A there. So, and at the end of the uh, video, um, we have contact information for Paramedics and Amory as well. So you can go to the IFS Symposium website, go to sponsors, go to Paramedics Lasers, and you can find some information here and get some of those questions asked. I do remind you, if you're part of the IFS, um, we have two more um, exclusive pop up lectures happening on the 23rd and 30th. And then we'll have more in July and August. If you're not part of the IFS, then please register by, by July 4th if you want to get involved in all the fun things um, that we have happening. Amory, thank you very much for taking the time for the Q&A. Maya from Paramax Lasers, thank you very much as well um, for organizing this and for um, getting all the information from the people that have been using your laser to, um, to see these results that they're getting to inspire us to investigate more as well. Much appreciated. And thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you and bye.